In this video, we're going to be looking at Mercury Retrograde Redefined. I think it's about time that we start looking at the relationship that we have to Mercury Retrograde and the phases and starting to clear away some of the information out there that's not going to empower us, but actually keep us more distracted. So my name is Simon and I use astrology as a tool for healing and transformation. Now, my process when it comes to looking at astrology is not in a sense, always just about predicting the future or trying to understand um, how a personal transit's going to play out. In fact, what I use astrology for, ironically, is to disprove it. And the more that I attempt to disprove it, the more it reflects back to me the accuracy and the validation for myself. So throughout the years that I've you know spoken to over you know a thousand people, I've always looked at a transit and said, oh, that's interesting. You're literally experiencing this in your life right now. And here's this transit and here's this theme. And there's this feedback that comes back from people and clients and just saying, yes, that's exactly the case. And so by saying, well, you know, what is the, what is the reason for that? Um, it leads me to investigating it. And for me, this is about consistently testing the process, right? Living it. Um, so with Mercury retrograde, it's, it's no exception. You know, there's a lot of information out there that turns around and says, you shouldn't sign a contract during Mercury retrograde. You shouldn't um, buy an electronic piece, right? Or the classic one that I recently read was don't go near your Apple store and go and upgrade your phone during the Mercury retrograde. And honestly, at a mechanical level, I can understand why we drew conclusions like that. Because the function of Mercury in and of itself is electrical um, synapses that exist within our physical bodies, but it also correlates to the way that information actually travels. And so when Mercury does go on holiday, it kind of turns around and says, sorry guys, but there's going to be little bits of information that are going to be missing. But that doesn't mean that we should stop and not do anything during those times. You know, this is actually the perfect invitation to be able to see that we've used astrology in the past as a tool for prediction only, but we've missed the soul. We've missed who you are. We've missed your emotional journey. And so in this sense over here, when Mercury retrograde comes along, the invitation really is to look at the things that you've already initiated, right? Prior to the Mercury retrograde feature. And for some of you, you might actually go, yeah, that's how I've been using it. But in that sense, it's only a few selection of us that have really been interacting with it consciously, where we're looking back at our sort of three months of however long Mercury retrograde uh, or Mercury has been direct. And we ask ourselves, what is it that we have not fully completed that now during this retrograde phase, we come back to and we sign the contract. We fix the phone as an example. I mean, for me personally, I have signed a contract. I have uh, bought a laptop. In fact, all of the taboos that comes along with Mercury Retrograde, I've actually done on purpose to test it. And my experience has been is that when I look back at the events or what it is that I needed to kind of sign or something, um, there have always been something that has been processing during the Mercury Direct v uh, phase. And then the energy comes back and says, now it's time. And there's been a synchronicity. And that's also something that in the old paradigm of how we've been processing uh, Mercury retrograde or any planetary activation, we've always been looking at it through the lens of maybe something a little bit more personality trait oriented, or let's the fear of the future needs to be fulfilled with the certainty of what astrology can do for me. Whereas the whole entire beautiful part of this art is the inward journey that it connects you to. It helps you find meaning. It helps you find a purpose. So redefining Mercury retrograde gives us this opportunity to actually start looking at, okay, well, for me as an example, Mercury retrograde that's coming up right now uh, will land in my first house. So I know that there are certain aspects of that Mercury direct over the last couple of months that have been showing up for me. And I know that during this retrograde phase, the thing I'm going to be concentrating on in terms of paying attention to what life is bringing to me to say, hey, Sam, here are some things that um, need revisiting, rethinking, right? So we go back to that and we sign that contract or we go back to that and we say, I'm actually moving into my house right now, right? Imagine, and this is where the dilemma sits, 
is that you're about to do something you know instinctually is correct for you, and then you super, well, you overlay the um, mercury retrograde information over to that, and you say, oh, no, I shouldn't move in, right? I shouldn't take that step. But that mercury retrograde is actually pointing to the completion phase so that by the time that mercury goes direct, there's an opening of new information in your life to come through. Do you see the connection there, right? So consciously working with mercury retrograde is looking at the scenarios in your life where mercury is showing up and saying what needs to be completed. And if it's something that needs to be completed, give yourself the space and authority to own what is correct for you in that moment? What is correct for you in that time? And if it means taking your, your Apple in, your, your, your Mac in to get fixed because during it broke during the Mercury Direct phase and you just haven't had time, well, this is the perfect opportunity, right? To see what, what's going on here with regards to your personal life, individuating your experience. And for the astrology's purpose, looking at where this macro retrograde lands in your, in your astrology chart. I mean, that's one of the most empowering ways that you can see, okay, I've got Mercury retrograde moving through my fifth as an example. So for the next, say, three weeks while it's in retrograde uh, form, I'm going to revisit certain things that I may have talked about around my creative sense of purpose or destiny. Maybe there's a few things that I need to kind of iron out a little bit, right? Or maybe it's time to write that script, or maybe it's time to have the conversation about having the baby as an example right? Fifth house energy is about child. So I really hope that this video gives you something to think about in terms of redefining the Mercury retrograde and seeing that in the past, we've always used Mercury retrograde as an avoidance, like, oh, we shouldn't do this thing. Instead, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at taking our personal life and our personal situations, validating it for ourselves, and then looking at what scenarios or experiences come into your way, and choosing to follow that road. All right, everybody have an amazing day and uh, take care. Bye.